With that, we move to our last um, item for this category of uh, presentations, item number six, which is our other most important uh, district, which is an update from the Fremont Union High School District. Well, thank you, Mayor Wong. It's such a pleasure to be speaking with all of you this evening. Uh, I'm joined tonight by most of our board of trustees. We have President Bill Wilson, Jeff Moe, Nancy Newton, Barbara Nunes, and this is Sue Larson. Some of you may know Sue or not. Uh, she used to be the face of Fremont High School, but now we're so grateful to have her in our office working on communications. So uh, it's, again, it's a pleasure to be here tonight, and thank you so much for having us. Uh, it's always fun to talk about our schools. So the first thing I think we ought to talk about is who are we? Not that you really don't know, but we are five high schools. Uh, we are nearly 11,000 students, which might surprise you. Uh, and they were there yesterday. I saw them. There's lots of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and we still remain the third highest performing uh, high school district in, in the state of California. And a number of our schools are recognized throughout the nation as some of the finest schools in the country. Uh, so we're pretty proud of ourselves, and that's just a little picture of some of the great kids that we get to work with every day. We are also a very large adult and community education program where we serve over 22,000 people that live in the community. And that's often overlooked. People don't think of us as an adult school location, but we really do serve a great many of the people in this community, whether they're infants because we teach parenting classes, all the way to senior citizens. And we really do serve um, the diverse and individual needs of our community in so many ways. And if you've seen our catalog, you know that to be true. <coughs> So I also want to just point out something that I'm pretty sure you guys read the Cupertino Courier and, and or the Sunnyvale Sun. I know it's Cupertino, but it's still the, <laughs> the same type newspaper. And we're often front page news. So if you want to learn more about who we are, be sure and pick up your paper on Friday because we're likely to be in the, in the newspaper. And part of that's because our kids are so incredible. So this article is about our going green, which is a theme for us. We've saved literally um, thousands of gallons of water with our artificial fields this year, and it's a particularly important year to be doing things of that nature, along with our solar power. So we're really happy, but you also can read about some of our kids who are providing literature for prisoners in the state of California, which is pretty interesting, too. So our kids are incredible. Uh, we also have 1,000 employees in our district, um, and we have over a $100 million general fund budget. So we're not a small industry. Um, I know we're not Apple, but I think Apple sort of rivals the U.S. government or something in terms of their size and stature. Um, and I like to say about this, we're, we are a top-notch educational organization, and we're really very, very proud of that. And it's not a surprise that because this is such an incredible community that the students that are sent to our schools are outstanding. We also know that good schools raise property values, and that's a well-known fact. Um, and I think anyone who's trying to buy a house in this area knows there must be good schools somewhere because <laughs> the property values are going up very, very fast. I also like to say that because we are such great, we have such great kids, we actually decrease the drain on community resources because if you've ever lived in a community where kids aren't focused on school or aren't involved and passionate about what they do in school and after school, it's a drain on the resources. So again, that speaks to the incredible community that Cupertino uh, has and the great kids that come our way. And I still think of public education maybe because I've been, I just recently was introduced as being in public education for more than four decades. It took me back, but it's, it's true. <laughs> uh, so, um, that was but, from your kindergarten experience. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, Rod. Uh, but, um, your own. Uh, it is the, uh, we definitely still believe that we are the foundation of democracy and we take that job very seriously. So educating our kids for the future is very important to us. And as you heard from uh, the De Enza Foothill presentation, what we get to do is then hand them over to an incredible organization like Foothill De Enza to help us get them fully educated. And so many of our kids do get an incredible education after high school. We still continue to do more with less, and that might surprise you because there's been a lot in the news about the new funding formula, which is remarkable, and I think a very powerful statement in the, in the state of California. But it might surprise you to know that the monies that we have given away as far back as 2008 are still gone and will continue to be gone every year. So we will continue to be at levels that are below the 2008 
year in terms of funding and we will not see that 7.1 million back. So that's an important fact in how we have to think about our finances. But our funding does grow with property uh, taxes and uh, it's also important to remember we're not based on student enrollment. So when I said 11,000 students, it isn't like we get more money with each of those kids. But because the property values are going up, we do get more property tax, and so that is also helpful. I think this surprises a lot of people. Um, when I say we're good stewards, we also have to be good business people. We have to get ranked by Moody's and Standard & Poor's to be sure we get high rankings means lower uh, taxes for our community in terms of bond values, and it also makes a difference when we have to, as when we only get property tax dollars, we only get money twice a year, which forces us to do some borrowing. And so good Moody's and Standard & Poor's ranking help us get very good values for that kind of borrowing. Um, we are uh, building for the future. So uh, this is the new building at Cupertino High School. I don't know how many of you have seen it or toured it, several of you, I Enough. hope. And uh, please feel free to come and do that again. It is an incredible building. It encompasses our uh, student center, which is uh, student center, which is really where the office and the counseling office and the career center is housed. And the other side is our cafeteria, and across the top is our library. And we're particularly proud of this building because I really know that Cupertino High School is tucked in a little community area, and some people don't know what an incredible powerhouse it is. It really is an outstanding school. It's getting bigger every year. It's about 2,200 kids this year, um, and they needed that space. So the new cafeteria opens into the quad, and it's really been a wonderful space. The um, cafeteria and the library areas were now um, remodeled to be classrooms, so they're housing some of those new kids. This is what you will soon see at the corner of Sunnyvale Saratoga uh, Road in Fremont. It's the new Fremont High School, and we hope when it's finally finished, you'll drive by and say, wasn't that always here? Doesn't that look just like the building at the front of the school? Because that's our goal. That's an incredible historic site and sort of a landmark for many people in this uh, larger community. And so we wanted you to have a peek at what it's going to look at like not too distant future. This is uh, one of the structures that was completed last year at Homestead High School. It's a field house. Um, it also has a couple of classroom buildings and uh, it's classrooms at the back of the building. Uh, but it's an it's a incredibly used space. Um, you probably are aware, our kid, if you've had kids in high school recently, they, they fill their day, every crevice of it, with activities. <laughs> and so the competition for our spaces after school is huge. So this was a very welcome building at Homestead High School. The building you see below is not complete yet, but is well on its way. It's the new cafeteria building that also has physics classrooms attached to it. And uh, you are getting a little glimpse of the um, remodeled quad at Homestead that is um, being used right now. It was opened yesterday, so it's very exciting. This is a uh, picture. Allison likes it, by the way. Oh, good. Now, and uh, those trees are just in shock. They're not dying. Yeah, those she said that. that. A little sad, <laughs> yeah. but don't worry about that. They're not dying. She didn't mention that to me. <laughs> So we've got our Monta Vista classroom cafeteria building, incredible structure, really, you, all you have to do is see the kids using this place and you know it is a place that they will uh, take incredible care of over time and they, uh, they already treat it like it's been there forever. And so it's a wonderful cafeteria building, opens onto the quad again. Uh, there's a shade structure that provides shade, much needed shade in that particular quad. Incredible physics uh, classrooms downstairs and technology classrooms upstairs. So it's a, a really beautiful structure. Again, looking, we hope, like, you thought it was always there, because we're trying to make all these buildings really well integrated. The picture at the bottom is the future uh, master planning process that's underway for Limbrook High School. Uh, that is one of our schools that has grown the least over time, but is going to be growing in the future. And so we are doing a master planning process, not just at Limbrook, but at all five of the schools, to be sure we know what we would need to build for the future. And we do need to build for the future. So um, this is the enrollment by year, and if you'll notice uh, that we're getting really close to, we're already a little above this number, so we're getting closer to the 11,000 sooner than we thought. 
even though we have a demographer do that check every single year. But we think by 2020, we're going to be uh, up considerably uh, over 1,800 new students coming our way. And they're already in the pipeline. I want to make that case. This is not about any new building that's happening in Cupertino. These are kids that are here, and they're coming through, and they're going to be coming to our high schools. Um, so that's why we have young kids on this slide, even though we only serve high school kids, because these are just, um, I don't know, what do they call it? Um, high school kids in the early stage. <laughs> Polly, can you help explain it to the public and to the council? We kind of had this discussion at the mayor's uh, school meeting is that we're not talking about additional housing, but actually resale or people who rent that has bigger families. Could you yes, clarify I, that, please? I'd be absolutely glad to clarify that. When I first started in this district 25 years ago, it'd be very unusual for a high school student to reside in multiple family dwellings, apartments, houses, or smaller homes. You would see them in single family homes more typically. That's no longer true. We see high school kids in all the housing in Cupertino. And so this is not about new housing. This is not about any decisions that ha have been made in that regard at all. This is just about the fact that people want to live and grow in this community. And so they are bringing their children to this community, and they are staying in these multiple family dwellings through their high school years. So it's, that's really what we're seeing. And we've had, that's why we have the demographer every year, because they have to reanalyze that. And we have a very clear picture that the student generation rate for all of the housing in Cupertino has changed over time. OK. So in order to provide the kind of education we need for these students, we're going to also have to have 60 new teachers and 51 new classrooms. Um, and that's important, and I think it's important to say, I was thinking when I was listening to the De Anza pre and Foothill presentation tonight, that you might be asking us, why are we not thinking of using online courses or things of that nature? Why are we still thinking of brick and mortar classrooms? And I think it's important to know that all the building we've done so far and all the building we're planning in the future is very flexible space. So there is what we do know about online courses for, for younger students is that a blended model is the most effective to ensure that their learning is high quality and that the universities and colleges are still requiring a lot of hands-on when we're, and even more hands-on now than we've ever thought of um, in terms of lab work and, and the Common Core is gonna be driving that kind of effort. So I, I think when I say classrooms, I'm really not talking about rows of desks. I'm talking about very flexible spaces, but with 1,800 new kids, we do need the space. So there are two measures on the ballot in November, along with many other things on the ballot in November. Um, and it is to, one to renew our existing $98 parcel tax. It's called Measure J. Uh, the other is a $295 million bond measure to construct these classrooms and renovate the facilities and, and upgrade our technology. It was very exciting, by the way, to hear about the fiber that might be coming our way here in Cupertino. That could be an that a will be coming. boost <laughs> for us, and we're very excited to be part of that. So I, I think that it may seem strange to have two measures on the ballot, but they do go hand in hand, and we want to talk a little about that. Because if we're going to we have that many more students, as I said, we also have to have more teachers. So we have to have space to house them. We have to have teachers to teach them. You may recall the $98 parcel uh, has been around for a very long time um, and is, a, is going to expire in 2016. Um, and we're not asking for an increase in that amount, but that does provide us with about 5% of our general fund budget. And all of that money goes to uh, help pay for teachers. So that's a significant chunk for teachers. Um, it is uh, one of the efforts we have to really work on is to try to maintain and attract highly qualified teachers. That might come as a surprise, but some of our neighboring districts do have significantly more money than we do per kid. And so remaining competitive is very important to us. And that 5% um, Graham did a calculation this morning and it's a minimum of $8,000 per teacher. And if you think of the salaries of some of our beginning teachers, an $8,000 pay cut would be significant. Um, so we want to make sure that we can keep our core classes going. Uh, and we want to make sure that we can keep all the advanced placement and honors classes going that we have. As come sometime when we're uh, offering advanced placement tests, you will be floored at how many we give. So they come to you, I think, already with some credit, don't they? <coughs> yeah, that's right. So Measure K is the bond measure. It's approximately $21 per 100,000 of assessed value. Um, and as I said, we would build the 51 new classrooms 
And uh, we really want to provide the best access to technology that we can because we know that's the future. We are already doing a, a, a good job with that, but as the student population increases, we're going to have to be more uh, attuned to that. So I have this picture up here with caution tape only to say, you know, we're proud of what we do. We're going to stretch every dollar that people give us. We are going to do the best for, by kids and have done the best by kids. And all of us are committed to that. Our teachers have been incredibly committed to that effort during these very difficult times the last five or six years. And uh, we have not had to cut program or, and, and that's largely because of the kind of team we've built and we're very, very pleased to have them. But we would hate to lose anything, so that's the caution. We can't take that kind of hit and we don't want to put kids in tents. Um, so, uh, you, there's a place to get additional information about this measure and uh, You'll undoubtedly be hearing a little more about it over time, but I just wanted to promise you that we're going to continue our commitment to excellence. We're proud to be part of this community. We feel honored to teach the children that come to us, and uh, we want to make sure that they continue to have an outstanding education, because I do think this is an incredible place. Um, so if you have any questions, I would be glad to answer them. First, I want to say thank you, uh, Superintendent Polly Bouvet, for being this very thorough um, presentation. I want to say thank you to the four school board trustees who are here tonight uh, to support your uh, superintendents. Very nice to see how a superintendent does it versus a president and vice president does it. If I can get my C manager to do a presentation, he'll probably pass it to one of us to, to do it. So everybody has a different uh, personality here. Um, just a word of caution to my C council colleague, and I didn't know that and I should have passed this to you, uh, Polly and I apologize, is that um, that this particular forum regarding election stuff, my seat attorney advised me that we should not be talking at this particular forum because it has to be open and, and, and equal. But uh, what has happened has happened. So I caution again that let's not talk about that particular I knew issue. I put the caution tape in there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on, on behalf of the mayor and the, and the city council and city staff, I want to say thank you for um, for the school district, the high school district of the two, we have two uh, sitting council members that have children that attends the two of the five um, high school at Monta Vista High School and Homestead High School. Um, Allison said that, uh, yes, it does look different at the quad. Uh, she does miss the old quad and she's gonna get used to the new quad and I told her that new things are always uh, good as well. You know how, how 14 year olds are and hope she's not watching this programming here, here tonight. <laughs> um, and um, thank you for, um, f we, uh, we have three wonderful high schools here in the city of Cupertino, Cupertino High School, Monta Vista High School, and Homestead High School. You have lent out your field year after year and step up to the plate when unfortunately De Anza College could not accommodate us. Uh, Cupertino High School stepped up to the plate, so we really appreciate that. We need to um, work on some other stuff together on that. Um, renting your, your, your space out to um, the various uh, language and culture classes that we have from the Korean community, the uh, the Cantonese community, the Mandarin speaking community, that we want to thank you for doing that and, and, and just working together with us. We, I mean, all five of us have um, some kind of connection with the five high school um, districts, and we really appreciate this. Um, questions or comments? I had one. Yes. I was wondering if you could comment briefly on how a couple years in your new school fields are doing for the, the whole education of the kids here. I mean, well, it, it took a while and there was some neighborhood controversy and now you're, lights. you're well, <laughs> I mean the whole, the whole project and, and how it's come out and how you view it now in retrospect. Well, there, I'd, I want to answer that in a couple ways. One, the kids are loving it and they are using it. They are used every weekend, they are used every afternoon and evening, and we're just thrilled with the result. I told you a little about the water savings, that's huge. Yeah. You can see our PE classes out there, we, and they're using them constantly, so that, that is terrific. But there's a whole other side to this, which is that the community is using them. Mm -hmm. And we're very, very pleased about that. So we do have someone that unlocks and locks those gates uh, on the weekends, and we're just thrilled to have the community use. And I've taken some time to talk to people who are running around the tracks and so forth and asking them how they like having the fields and if they're close by, and I just hear nothing but positives. So uh, we're glad to have that controversy behind us, and um, we're moving forward. Uh, and I just, I think of these fields not only for the high school, but for the whole community. And I think that if you come out early in the morning or later at night, you'll see people casually walking, children playing on the field. It's, it's a great feeling. So we, we find them a real asset. And I can tell you that they're certainly an asset to our athletic teams. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Council President Charles wanted me to clarify, is the 4th of July celebration fireworks at Creedon High School that we want to thank you for uh, that partnership. Any questions or comments? Yes, I do. Um, a major K and major Z, how much are I'm you I'm sorry, expecting? but um, C. Turney said this is not the right forum to talk about it. I'm not talking about the election. I'm talking about how much you're expecting to raise. Is C. Turney okay with that? I'm okay with that. The, the issue that we have here is this is under a city council event, an itemized, um, an agendized item. This is on a presentation. And if we go forward with this, we're going to have to allow everybody who is, has any proposition to go forward and make a presentation to the city for council comment. But she already made the presentation. I'm I, asking how much expecting to raise. And what she will say to that. you, Barry, I'll get that information to you tomorrow. Barry, I'll get that information to you. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And Good I apologize. Job. We weren't trying to sneak one in. But I appreciate you listening. And, and the one thing is I know on behalf of the council that, they, that they're, partic they're respecting my admonition not out of uh, anything other than complete respect and appreciation for your efforts for the schools, but merely out of respect for the city attorney crankiness. I completely, I completely <laughs> understand. One I good thing is to have city attorneys and school attorneys to keep us out of trouble, both elected and staff people. So we really uh, like that. But again, we're really proud to have three wonderful, out of the three of the five, three of them happen to be in the city of Cupertino. We're again, we're very proud of um, Cupertino, Monta Vista, Homestead in no particular order. And again, on behalf of the these 2,000 residents for both the uh, Foothill Anza Community College uh, District as well as the F uh, Fremont Union High School District. And earlier, we had the Crypto Union School District. As you can tell, we spent a lot of time uh, on these uh, three presentations. And we, on behalf of the five city council members, thank you very much for educating all of our children here in the city of Cupertino. Thank you very Let's much. Let's give them a round of applause for all three districts.